Hey, hey party people, welcome to today's construction video. We are learning to drape a basic block on this dress form. And I'm gonna be behind the camera and I'll be uh, interjecting with questions that I think you guys might ask in a classroom setting. So I'm gonna pretend Mariah's my teacher mm -hmm. and I'll be asking things as she works and shows us how to do all this business, all right? What we want to do with draping on our form is um, pay attention to just a portion of the body. So for this one, we're going to do uh, draping a basic bodice, which is a basic top. Um, and because we're going to start with the basics, uh, it's going to be symmetrical on both sides. So if I'm draping a top that's going to be the same on one side and the same on the other, I'm only going to work with half the body. Um, and when I convert it to a pattern, then I just copy it to the other side. So I know every measurement lines up, everything's symmetrical, it's perfect. Um, if you were draping something, say, you know, a one-sided top, then you would want to drape with the full, the full front. So on our form, we have, uh, we already have twill tape marking our waistline. Um, so that's an important measurement. So if you don't have that on there, you want to mark your true waist. On your form, it's going to be um, the thinner part of the waist. And if you feel your body, you go back and forth like this, it's it's um, where your body bends. That's gonna be your true waist. So there should most, I mean almost every form out there already has twill tape, but if yours doesn't, go ahead and mark yours. Uh, for here, I'm gonna mark our bust line. So the bust line is gonna be right across the bust. With this, we want to pay attention to marking across the apex. So the apex is the widest part of the bust. Let's go ahead and say it, it's the nipple. What you're gonna wanna do is mark um, from the center front, which typically your dress form is gonna have a pin right there. So I'm gonna take my twill tape and I'm gonna pin it at the center front. Oh, this is, this is important when you're pinning. Uh, you pin against the grain of what you're pinning, like you're pinning against the grain of the fabric. So let's say for instance, if I pin from the right hand side and I pull on this tool tape, you see how it comes right off. So what you wanna do is actually pin at the angle opposite. So if I pull on it, it's not gonna move. So I pinned it to the center. I wanna go across the widest point, the apex of the bust, and I wanna keep a nice straight horizontal visual line. So if it's easier for you, sometimes I'll just take a step back Make sure that it lines up visually straight across here. You don't want to angle it because that's going to affect your bust line. Um, for this, you want to keep it really nice and straight, which it may not look as straight to you um, because the body does curve, uh, but this is that's a pretty straight line there. So again, I'm going to come in and pin it against the angle of the fabric. So I'm gonna pin it the opposite way. And sometimes if, if you're nervous about it sliding at all, I'll do two pins on there. So I know that it's not gonna move around on the body. If you were doing a dress, you would also mark the hip line as well. You would put 12 tape along the hip line. For today, we're just doing the bodice. So this is really all we need to mark. Next, what we wanna do is get our fabric. And we wanna drape the full length from the shoulder to the waist. Now, that on here is about 17 inches. If I just cut 17 inches of fabric, you're gonna start draping and it's gonna get smaller and smaller as you drape and you're not gonna end up with enough. Always cut more fabric than you think you're gonna need because chances are you will need it and you can always cut it away later. So I'm gonna cut more than that. If this was my 17 inches, I know that's not gonna be enough fabric. So I'm gonna cut several inches, you know, maybe 10 inches more than that um, and just cut across. And with muslin, you can rip and it'll go in a straight line. Now, this is on a fold. I actually have double what I need and I went ahead and cut that so that I have a full panel for the front and when we do the back, I'll have a panel for the back. So I've got a nice square-ish um, piece of fabric and uh, you want to pay attention to your grain line because you want to, um, you want to drape on the grain, which means that the grain 
when you're going with the grain and the fabric, basically you have your selvage, which is the side of the fabric. Um, on some fabrics like this, it's just, it's the same color, it's more tightly woven, um, and, it, and it cleans up the edge. You don't see these raw edges. Um, on some fabrics, like a nice wool or on denim, you can see the selvage. It may be a different color. It may be a different texture, some type of contrast. Um, sometimes there's like a thread woven through. Um, you want to find your selvage because that's really important um, in knowing that you're cutting your fabric the right direction. The important thing about your direction of fabric is that the grain line is going to be the tightest woven um, direction. So it doesn't really stretch. Unless you're buying stretch fabric, which is a whole different world, um, this isn't really going to have stretch. Your cross grain, so going the opposite way, you can see it has a little bit more stretch. And depending what kind of fabric, some have slightly more, some have slightly less, but there's more stretch. So if I were draping going this way, it's going to stretch and lay differently on the body than if I'm draping following the grain going this way. Um, if you... So that's your, your grain is straight um, vertical, your cross grain is straight horizontal, and anything on an angle is the bias. The true bias is 90 degrees, that's gonna be the most stretch that you'll get from a garment. So if you see those um, like silk slinky dresses, you know, they're super fitted and they just, like going down the runway, they just follow, move with the body, those are all cut on, um, on the bias because they, they move with the body, they have that stretch and that movement. You would not get that if you cut those dresses straight gray. They'd be like stiff walking down the runway. So depending on what kind of garment you're making, it's gonna affect how you lay out your fabric, how you cut your fabric, and how you drape. For this, this is a basic bodice. I'm gonna drape using my grain line. I want to line up um, my grain line with the center front line of the body. So on dress forms, you should have a seam there that's gonna be your center front. Um, what I don't wanna do is line this selvage directly up against that line because sometimes the selvage, depending on the fabric, is more tightly woven, the texture's a little bit different. I don't wanna count on my selvage. So the way that I drape is I go ahead and take my ruler and I line it up. I usually do one inch and mark it in from the selvage. And this, I'm gonna put a CF for the center front. So if it's one inch in, I'm gonna go over to the iron and just press that under that one inch. All right, guys, I'm back. Um, so we just ironed this under a nice clean one inch. I wanna kind of look at about the middle of there. I'm just gonna mark it with my finger. And I'm going to draw a horizontal line. So I'm gonna use my ruler, line it up exactly against that center front line. I'm going to mark it so I know that it's nice and straight. And then I'm gonna draw a clean horizontal line, which actually Zoe's graph <laughs> table is fantastic for this because I can see right through it. It's a random um, gift from a carpenter friend that I love. It's a great gift. So once we have this marked, we're ready. You guys ready to drape? So I'm going to take my fabric and I'm going to line up this line with my twill tape. I always have students ask, am I marking from the top of the twill tape, the bottom? I mean, this is, this is like a five eighths of an inch twill tape. So I just make it standard. Whatever you're doing, do it consistently throughout all of them. So I measure from the bottom, the bottom of my bust twill tape, the bottom of my waist twill tape. And that way I just know when I'm transferring patterns, there's no question. So I've got my pens. And I'm going to line this up with the center front and I'm going to pin. Here's another little trick that I do. These dress forms are on wheels. When you're pushing on them, a lot of times they, they start to slide back. I, without even noticing it, um, I naturally put my foot on the bottom with one foot. So the whole time I'm draping, I'm like, I'm like a flamingo over here with like <laughs> one foot up. So again, I'm gonna stick two pins in a couple of the um, the more stress points um, of the drape just so that if it gets pulled, it's not going to rip out. So I'm going to follow this line up the center front. You can see the seam of the body. So I'm just going to put some pins in. Again, remember, I'm not going to go the same direction as the fabric because it can just pull right out. I'm going to go against, against the direction of the fabric. So if I pull, it doesn't move. 
And I'd say for this part, you know, every couple of inches is fine. And I'm going to pin to that center front to the very um, part where the neck and the bodice meet. So there's, there's usually a pin already in there. So now I'm going to do the same going down until the waistline. And because I mark to the bottom of my twill tape, I'm going to go down to the bottom and that's, I'm going to stick in two pins there as well. Okay, so we've got our nice clean straight line. So you can see on the body, the body is not flat. If you're putting flat fabric on a rounded body, you're gonna end up with all this excess. So what we need to do is um, I wanna keep my nice straight line, um, my bust line, and then I'm gonna move this fabric into some darts so that I can start to form it around the body. So I want to follow my bust line. So if you've got kind of thin muslin like this, you can see I'm not sure if, if you can see it in the video, but I can see through um, and see my, my black twill tape. But even if you can't see it, you can feel it. So you can feel that line across the body and you can feel where it meets the seam on the side. So the nice thing about these forms is they have this like wrapped seam. So you can feel, I mean, you're, you're draping by braille right now. So you're going to follow that, that line I get to the side seam and I'm going to pin. Again, I'm going to work on the outside of this side seam. I'm going to use that as my, um, as my marker for it. So I'm going to do two pins on this one. So that's going to give me my nice, clean, straight bust line. So now you can see all this excess fabric up here that needs to go somewhere and this excess fabric down here. With draping at this point, you want to work uh, clockwise. Um, it's easier if you're draping something basic like this to have to have kind of a direction that you're going and you're going to drape in a certain order. If you're draping some fabulous couture gown, there's no rhyme or reason. You you just start draping and you see what happens. Um, with something very basic like this that you're going to take in flat pattern, you're essentially you're draping for a pattern. There's a difference between that and just draping and twisting and manipulating fabric and seeing what happens and creating some like crazy extravagant 3D shape. That's not what we're doing today. This is, this is creating draping for a pattern. What I want to do is work my way around the neck. Well, you can see it's got all this fabric and it's pulling because this is a rounded part of the body. So this is where we bring out our scissors and you want to be careful that you're not cutting too much because if you cut away too much then you end up with not enough fabric to kind of make your way around the shoulder. So I go conservative. You can always cut more later. So I'm just going to cut a little off the top of my fabric. And in order to release some of this pool of this fabric, you want to create little slices that are going to release the fabric. So I'm just going to cut that down. I'm going to cut a little slice here. And you can see that it'll already start to sit a little bit flatter. I'm gonna go maybe another quarter of an inch to where it kind of starts to sit flat. I'm gonna feel for that neck seam in here and I'm gonna put in a pin. So now I'm gonna go, you know, maybe another half inch over or so. And I'm gonna cut down to where it starts to to where it starts to release the fabric. So I'm going to do the same thing. You can see how it's starting to flatten out across the body. Get up to this shoulder line. You can see I almost clipped too much. There's almost, it's like right up against the line. <laughs> <laughs> so um, like I said, go conservative, um, especially if you're first starting out. Um, you can always clip more later. So I'm going to in into there and I can feel I can feel where my shoulder line is so I'm going to stop there so it's nice and flat across the shoulder and, and it's pretty flat up here this is a nice flat drape don't worry about this extra bit in here because this is going to get moved out um, you actually want a little bit 
you want enough that you can kind of pinch um, through this part because if you guys have ever had um, a dress where it's a little bit hard to kind of move your arms around, like if it's a little too tight in the armhole, you're gonna be uncomfortable. You want, you don't need to fit skin tight, pull it super tight against the body. You wanna be able to allow a little bit of movement because the body moves, you know? This is, we're not, we're not a flat being like our dress form. So you wanna have a little bit, maybe a pinch. If you have more than that um, at this point, then either your line is a little bit off here, your, your bust line, or you need to work some more of this fabric into the neck. So once we get down to our bust line, which means we've got a lot of extra fabric that's just laying across here, I'm just gonna cut it down a little. And I'll just pin this part back just so you guys can see a little bit cleaner. So what we wanna do now is create um, darts to work out some of this fabric. Because right now, she's fitted up top and she's just boxy straight down, which is great. If you were making like an A-line dress, this is great. Fitted, fitted. That's my favorite out. dress silhouette right there. Okay. <laughs> Ladies, A-line dresses are very flattering for pretty much every figure. So <laughs> it's like the all around great, great fit. Um, so that's, that's how you would do that. You would release to the bottom and you would decide if you want to make it a little bit wider, a bit, bit more aid. You can kind of shape it in a little. Um, but for here, for today, we're going to keep fitting in, just getting tighter and tighter. We want to work this fabric. You can work it into one dart, but it's the fit is a little bit better if you work it into two. So I like to do a waist dart and a side bust dart. You can also shape this fabric, shift it, unpin, shift it up, and do a dart up at the shoulder. Um, that was more popular, I think, in the, in the 40s and 50s. Kind of today, we're more often you'll see either a side bust start or a waist start or both. So today we're gonna to do both. So at this point, we wanna pay attention to our apex. Remember how I brought up that awkward word, the nipple? That's what we're gonna talk about. So the apex is the widest point of the bust and you wanna pay attention to, when you're taking measurements on the body, you, you, know, you take a shoulder measurement, you take a bust measurement, you take a waist measurement, you measure apex to apex, so how far apart, some ladies' breasts are further apart, some are closer together. You want to be able to create a fit that works for each individual body. And you would take a measurement um, from the shoulder point down to the apex. So you know where the bust is sitting as well. Some people it's much higher up, some people it's lower down. You want to create a garment that works for their body. We don't want to do our darts all the way to the apex because that's pulling the fabric away. The apex is the widest point in the body, so we actually want to start a little bit back from there. So for a bust this size, um, with the form, usually you want to stay around um, around an inch, around three quarters of an inch. I typically go um, three quarters of an inch down and one inch over from the bust, and that's what I work with. The larger the cup size of the bust, the further you want to work out because you want to give um, the fullest shape of the bust enough room and enough fabric. So if you're looking at a much larger bust, you know, it could be up to two, two and a half inches um, to really give enough space um, for that shape. This is going to be my apex. One inch over. Quarters of an inch down. This is actually where I'm going to end my darts. So there's a little bit more fullness in the actual bust. Otherwise, I think you get a cone bra look, don't you? No, I mean... Madonna can rock it, but I think the, the everyday woman doesn't really want that that cone bra or that like 1950s just point, you the know, I mean, bra. you're thinking about the bust, you're thinking about darts kind of like a teepee. It's forming this shape around your body. So if the, if the end of the teepee is going all the way into a point, you're going to have a serious point situation going on. Um, if you're stopping a little bit short of that, it's going to round out the top and make it... Um, a little more natural to, to our real bodies. Um, so you know how I said we're going, we're going clockwise? Once you get into the dart situation, you're going counterclockwise. So I'm going to work my way across the waistline until I find the princess seam. So here, we'll look at this side of the body. The princess seam is built in on the form. 
Um, and that is the seam that goes through the apex, goes through the waistline, goes down the hip. So I wanna feel for that princess seam. That's where I'm gonna line up my dart. So I'm gonna do the same shaping that we did for this, um, for this neckline. I'm gonna do the same thing because if I just bring this over, you can see there's this fabric fighting. We want, to, we want it to lie down nice and flat. This down just a little. I'm gonna do some cuts up to that waistline seam to just release that fabric. It lies a little bit flatter. And I wanna bring it, working my way across, a mark where I feel that, that princess line line up with my waistline. So I'm gonna mark that spot. So that's gonna be the beginning of my dart. So I put a little pin in where that dart is. Now I wanna work this fabric out. You can work with what you have. Um, if your form is a different size, you may have different measurements. For this size form, I would say do about an inch and a half, um, you know, an inch, an inch and a half dart. Uh, I'm gonna measure uh, just for the viewer's reference, it's been a while since I measured that dress form, but the bust is about 34, 35 inches. The waist is about 25, 26 inches, yeah. just so the viewers know what, what you're yeah. using. And really, this is, it's not a set in stone thing. When you start, you can, you can create one dart, and if you feel like you have too much fabric, once you get around to your bust start, just adjust your first dart. You're, it's kind of, you're just feeling it out as you go. Working with measurements on a pattern, not coming from a drape, I feel like that's, it's like baking. You're working with extreme measurements. You know, if you draw every line, every measurement perfectly, it comes out perfect. Draping is not like that. Draping is cooking. You're throwing in some things. You're seeing how it comes out. You're like, oh, I like this. I'm going to keep it. Ooh, this, this feels a little bit off, so I'm going to change this measurement just a little. That's fine. Draping is figuring it out as you go. Um, so don't, don't hyper-focus on every little measurement um, when you're draping. You can get to that when you get to your flat pattern, and you'll kind of clean up all the lines anyways. Um, so for this, again, I'm just going to do, say I'm going to do an inch and a quarter, and I'm going to mark the halfway point. So for an inch and a quarter, that would be five-eighths. It's half. The front part of my dart, the back part of my dart, and the center. So I'm going to take this back part of my dart, create a fold line, and I'm going to fold over to the center. So you can see, or sorry, fold over to the front. So it folds on that center line. This is something to pay attention to, the direction that you fold the dart. You want to fold, if you have a, a vertical dart, you want the excess, the underside of the dart to go away from the, from the center of the body. So if I'm working with the front, I'm going to fold my dart extra fabric out towards my side seams. If I'm working with my back, I'm going to fold it towards my side seams. And when you have a horizontal dart, like a bust line, or sometimes you have like a sleeve dart, you want to fold that extra fabric down. So that's the direction that we're going to go. So I'm going to fold this in, slide that down, make it a little bit tighter. Stand on my form so it doesn't roll away. And I'm just going to stick a few pins in. You'll notice that I pin in the same direction every time. So when I'm pinning here, I want to kind of pin at a slight angle, you know, 20, 45 degrees, something, a slight angle. Um, and all my pins are going to go in the same direction. I'm not just going to start throwing in pins. If I did a pin this way, it comes undone. When you're pinning fabric, you want to pin through both fabrics as well. If you just pin like this, it comes open. You're not really pinning anything. So now you can see extra fabric again. Now we want to continue to work our way towards our side seam. So I'm going to keep cut away extra fabric and I'm going to slice and see how it's starting to lay flat against the form. And I'm going right back out to where I can feel that side seam. So that's going to be, I'll put a little mark on here, where the bottom of my twill tape and the side seam meet. Now I'm going to push this fabric up, make it nice and flat. And again, I'm going to pin on the back side. I can feel that 
um, that side seam in there, and I'm going to pin on the back side. And now you can see how much fabric we're going to need for our dart. Push this fabric, shift this up until it folds against that bust line. If you see me kind of struggling with the pins, I'm trying to get the fabric without catching the form because eventually I want to be able to pull this off the form. Now we've got our basic shape. I can kind of cut away extra fabric. Actually, I'm gonna pin all the way up to, to the armhole here. Once you have your, your um, bodice nicely draped on here, the next thing that you wanna do is mark all the important information on the bodice. This is when I get out my pencil. You don't wanna use um, a mechanical pencil for this because it's too thin and it can poke straight through and we don't wanna draw on Zoe's beautiful dress form. Um, we don't wanna use a marker. We don't wanna use anything that's gonna bleed through. So I take my pencil and you can feel, again, this is <laughs> draping by braille, you can feel the, the seams. Um, so I'm going to mark. This actually doesn't have a very strong shoulder seam, so it's harder to feel. Your arm plate right here. If you create a shirt or a dress or a bodice that goes right up to this arm plate, it's going to be so tight. Um, it's going to be wildly uncomfortable. You want to start an inch down from there. Um, so for, for a dress, for a shirt, if you're doing a jacket, you really you want a little bit wider of an armhole. So I would start maybe like an inch and a half down. But for this, this is a bodice. So I'm going to measure from the bottom. Here, I'll mark. This is where the bottom of that arm plate is. I'm just going to measure one inch down. That's going to be the start of my armhole. From there, you can kind of just follow the curve. So I'm not, I'm not following the arm plate. I'm following the, I'll show you on this side. I'm following the curve of the body. So where you see my ruler curve around here, where that's flat, that's where I'm going to mark. I'm not going to mark all the way down here because we've got an arm. You know, I don't want it to be super tight right there where I can't raise my arm. Like, we have shape. We have our body shape. So we want to um, just kind of go where that line would be. It's not a perfect science. I always have students um, learning how to drape and kind of stressing about the armhole shape. We're going to pull it down and clean it up um, as kind of as a flat pattern before we transfer it to paper. So it's, it doesn't have to be a flawless thing. Just kind of draw in what, what looks good to you as an armhole. Um, and the more often you do it, the more that you'll have an eye for what looks good. Um, the first time you do it, you're like, I don't know. Does that look good? I don't know. Let's take it down and we'll see. Um, so I just drew in a little armhole. You know, I adjust as I go, kind of just smooth out the curve. And then I'm going to draw the back side of that side seam. So everything on here is marked. So at this point, you've got a fully draped front bodice. We are going to have another video where we show how to take this down, how to create a flat pattern from it. So that'll be in the following video. So we draped the, the bodice on this side of the body. So I want to drape the back on the same side of the body. Same thing as before. I pressed under um, one inch from the uh, selvage. Line it up across the center back. Do you need to twill tape any sections in the back drape? Um, yes and no. It depends on what you're draping. Um, sometimes, actually, I, I will today. Um, I will do like a shoulder line. So on a lot of forms, they have it already marked where the curve of the line is. It's not, you don't have to do this step, but it's, it's a nice one to have. Um, so I believe this should be about three inches down. Sometimes it's three, sometimes it's three and a half. So this one's three inches down. That's a good 
point. It just depends on the size of your form, the size of your shoulder. If you're working with a men's form, um, men's shoulders tend to be a little bit meatier um, than women's shoulders, so it may be a, a slightly bigger measurement. But you're kind of just looking at where the shoulder breaks, like where there's a lot of curve and then it breaks to go flatter. So that's going to be about three inches down on this form. I love how these mannequins, they're so strategic that even the pin placement is exact. Everything, they think about every little detail. So I stuck two pins in there so it wouldn't move. And again, I want to kind of make it a pretty straight horizontal line. You kind of want to look at your waistline and create a pretty straight line from there. And it's going to curve around the body so it's not going to visually look that straight, but if I hold it out, it's actually line this up. So I've got my center back line and for this one you can feel the back is much flatter. We don't have a bust to work with so you can actually kind of work it across to where it's already flat. We don't have to do a side bust start. We don't need to do, um, you don't have to do a waist start. We're just gonna do a shoulder dart. So for this one, we are going to work counterclockwise all the way through for this. So we're gonna start at the bottom. So I'm just going to pin some of that fabric out of the way so I can work with this without having to kind of fight it as I go. Same as before, I'm gonna stick one more pin in here so it doesn't move. I want to keep it nice and flat against the body, so I'm just going to do a couple little cuts. And if you start to see it bubbling a little, you can just cut a little further, or you can just do extra cuts and it'll start to lay down flat again. So be careful you're not actually chopping into your form also. <laughs> just. So it doesn't matter how many of those vertical cuts you make, as long as you don't cut into the waist, right? Yes, as long as you don't cut into the waist, you're fine. As many as it takes to just kind of keep it nice and smooth to where, see it's still kind of bubbling, so that means I need to cut a little bit closer, and sometimes doing just a couple of extra little cuts. Lie down a little flatter. Also, I have a really gross habit of, I always have pins in my mouth. If you do that, just be careful. You're not like sticking, you know, sticking yourself, piercing your tongue. It's a gross habit. Don't start it if you haven't done it. <laughs> so I'm making my way all the way to the side seam. So that's a pretty straight line. So I'm just gonna stick pins in, going against the grain of the fabric. So now we've worked our way up to here. So I want to kind of smooth across this armhole. Stick a couple pins in. So now all I've got is this shoulder dart area. So I want to clean up my neck so I know exactly how much shoulder dart I need to take. So same as the front. I just want to make it so it lies down nice and clean against the neckline. So now I've got my shoulder. And again, we want to take our dart to where the extra fabric is moving away from the center of the body. So instead of going this way, we're going to push it out this way. Are you placing that shoulder dart along the princess line at all? Or is it just kind of following the natural curve? Yeah, so I want, basically, I want to feel along the neckline to where the princess line lines up. So that's going to be, here's our princess line, and there's our neckline, so there's an X. So I want all this extra fabric to line up where that princess line is right here. And that's going to create my dart. Now on here, it's still going to look a little bit bubbly. That's going to work out when we do our flat pattern, and when we sew our dart and iron it, it's going to kind of shape a little softer. Now I want to mark where it lines up across my shoulder line, where the dart, the end of the dart hits. That's going to be the end of my dart there. 
Um, so I'm just going to do the same thing as the front, and I'm just going to mark in those seam lines that I can feel. The next seam, the shoulder seam. Remember again, the arm plate, we're not going to measure to the arm plate, we're going to go one inch down. So if this is my arm plate right here, I'm going to measure an inch down. Oh, you know what? I just went straight to that arm plate that I marked for you guys. So just, I'm going to X that out. My armhole to my one inch down. Yeah, just speaking from personal experience, it's really important to X out that line. So later on when you take it off, you're like, oh, you're which, like, which was one was this? <laughs> one I so wanted. Marking X's. Yeah. See, I've been doing this for years. I still do this. So just X it out. All right, it's marked up. It's ready to go. Are you gonna mark where you marked the back yoke twill, Lauren, at all? You don't need to. Okay. That was that was to line up the dart and to get ah, okay. that shaping, but you, you don't need to. That makes sense. Yeah. Was that amazing? That was amazing. That was so thorough. And you know, for some of you more advanced students that may have been a little bit slow paced, but we really uh, built out this curriculum for those who are starting and really like deep diving and getting into every detail. And so, you know, I hope we got all the details that you learned all the things. Um, if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, you should, if you are interested in watching Mariah take down the drape and drafting the pattern from it. And uh, you know, depending on how well the series goes, we'll be making more construction videos in the future. So do subscribe. Please like this video if you learned something new today, share, hit the notification bell, all those things. Drop me or Mariah questions and comments below. Check the description box for links to related videos. Is that it? <laughs> Outros are hard, man. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. Mm. Yeah. All right. And I will see you in the next video. Hi, everyone. Welcome. Oh, that's not how I start videos. One time I started videos with, without saying, hey, hey, party people, and everyone gave me shit about it. <laughs>